This is a 65 year old former smoker um, who has a history of hepatitis B, hepatitis C, as well as chronic venous insufficiency with varicosities. He was originally seen because he had developed a left second toe ulcer. Duplex confirmed that he had severe left leg inflow disease with an ABI of 0.62 and a TBI of zero. We brought him to the lab from an up and over approach, and you can see on his initial angiogram, he has a complete calcific occlusion of the common femoral. We took orthogonal views here, both LEO and REO, just to show the dense calcific nature and eccentric nature of this very complex lesion. Fortunately, he had really nice runoff distally. Once we crossed that occlusion, we elected to place an embolic protection device there and decided to make a small pilot channel there with a two millimeter orbital atherectomy device. And you can see that after the orbital atherectomy device, we've got a nice small, albeit small channel, we do have a nice channel through there. Unfortunately though, we did seem to lose our profunda after the orbital atherectomy. So the question of course is, oh my gosh, what do we do now? As you can see from this slide, I did try to get a wire in that profunda uh, unsuccessfully. So I said, well, let me just take care of this common femoral because that's really his culprit lesion. So we treated that uh, with an M5 plus eight millimeter device and really a very, very nice result. No dissection at all, beautiful. But I gotta be honest with you, that loss of that profunda was really bugging me. So we tried to use a reentry device to get back into that true wound, but it was no dice. That calcium was just so bad. So uh, we took a page from our CLI playbook and we said, well, gee, if we do retrograde pedal access, why not try a retrograde profunda access? And so we did it in the same way with an 018 wire and an 018 support catheter. So we were able to traverse that profunda occlusion retrograde. That wire was then snared in the common femoral, and then we simply exteriorized that wire, redirected it down the deep femoral branch of the profunda, pre-dilated with a four millimeter balloon, and we then decided to try to figure out just how big is this SFA osteum. And so we went to um, our intravascular ultrasound, and we saw that it was actually a seven millimeter diameter, much larger than we would have anticipated on angiography. And so we said, well, if it's seven millimeters, let's go ahead and use the rest of those 150 pulses in our eight by 60 balloon. And I would venture to say not too many people would have felt comfortable using an eight millimeter IVL balloon in that profunda. But again, this is really, uh, some of the major advantages of IVIS being able to really characterize the lesion and adequately size uh, the vessel. So this was then followed by a 740 uh, DCB, and you can see a spectacular result in that um, profunda. But there was still a little bit of residual disease in that common femoral, and it got me to thinking, well, maybe that common femoral is actually bigger than we thought. And sure enough, you can see that this was eight by eight by eight by 6.4 millimeters. So at that point we said, let's drop a bunker buster on there. So we took a nine by 30 L6 balloon and you can see an absolutely spectacular result there, like a less than 10% residual, no dissection, no contrast extravasation, no plaque shift into the profunda. And so with you, when you look at this before and after picture, this is a patient who, again, outpatient, went home the same day, didn't have to have a big common femoral endarterectomy scar and all the resulting scarring underneath. So um, in, in my mind, uh, we measured success by the fact that this gentleman went home the same day. He has been ambulating ad lib with complete resolution of his symptoms. And I think a couple of really important learning points from this case. Number one, how angiography very frequently will underestimate vessel size. And that in turn means that we're probably undersizing our therapy, including IVL. I think this case also demonstrates the great results that you can achieve with IVL um, in these areas where we don't want to put a stent in, even in this case of very extreme severe calcification. And I think it also demonstrates how aggressive you can be with the shorter L6 balloon 
I don't think in my wildest dream I would have imagined that I was going to put a nine millimeter IVL balloon in his common femoral artery. Uh, but we're able to do that without injuring the smaller diameter SFA. And as my fellows like to hear me say all the time, when it comes to IVL, go big or go home, baby. And since no stents were required, we didn't burn any surgical bridges. This patient can still have an endarterectomy if he develops restenosis, but quite frankly, I doubt that's gonna happen.